When it comes to tracking analytics and metrics, so many founders are making terrible decisions and either going 100% on the data or 100% with their gut. Neither of them is the right answer. So watch this video if you want a couple tips on tracking and analytics for early stage startups. My name is Christian Pevarelli. I am the co-founder of We Are No Code. Remember, over the past 50 years, startups have been built in Silicon Valley and there is so much you can learn from other people's mistakes so you don't have to make them yourself. So follow, subscribe, like, share, let's go. Now metrics are literally what grounds a startup to facts and logic. That's actually a quote from Neil Patel. And it also allows you as a startup founder to set goals for yourself. Now, when we talk about getting metrics, we're talking about really getting data, right? And there are two types of data. Some are quantitative, which means that they are essentially like larger numbers, right? It's 100 people came to this landing page, uh, three people clicked the buy button. Uh, and then we have qualitative. Now, qualitative data is usually what we're gonna get from conversations with the individuals uh, uh, themselves. And so getting both of these are really useful because on one end, we want to go deeper into the psychology of the customer, understand maybe what made them not click on that button or what they really perceived when they reached a landing page that allows us to adapt the copy that might allow us to adapt the benefits that we present to that individual. Uh, see if we're even using the right language when we communicate this problem or the solution to the problem. And so we really want to use a balance between qualitative and quantitative data to be able to make smart decisions. Now, at this point, we haven't yet hit product market fit because we have a problem that we understand and we have a value proposition. But then after that, we're going to need to build the product. So before product market fit, really what's important to get are really engagement metrics. And then when we go after product market fit, we really are more focused around conversion metrics. So at this point, engagement metrics and feedback from our customer is our focus. However, once we pass product market fit, then we're gonna be really talking about growth. So for example, signups, invite rate. And so just make sure that your focus is really about getting deeper feedback at this stage. Another thing that's important is to take all data with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Why? Well, because if you don't take that data within the context of what that data actually means, then you might be making really bad decisions, right? So what's interesting is that we can get guided by data and by metrics, but it shouldn't be the sole decider in our decisions, right? We also need to use our logic. We also wanna use our gut sometimes, uh, you know, as they say, and we wanna use a balance between both those because if we don't contextualize that data, it's really not gonna be useful for us and we might make a terrible decision, right? Now, the two pieces of software at this point that are gonna be useful for you are both Google Analytics and Hotjar. Google Analytics is gonna be giving you some of that over the top data. And then Hotjar is really gonna show us how people interact every time they reach that landing page. Are they scrolling all the way to the bottom? Are they trying to rage click on a button which is not a button? Are there any things that are really giving us indicators of each individual session, but then also checking out heat maps, which means that we can see if there are 100 people who have gone to this page, we can see the percentage of people who scrolled until the bottom, we can see uh, where people clicked in general. We can see all types of things and find commonalities between those interactions to improve that experience. And so this stage, we're really looking for that feedback that's gonna allow us to fine tune our copywriting, fine tune the benefits, for example, that we're choosing to talk about, uh, fine tune the features that we're talking about, potentially even uh, figuring out if we can use a better, better illustration to talk about something, whether or not people understood the general gist just from literally reading the two first sentences at the very top header section. Um, there's a lot of insight here that's gonna allow us to fine tune this so that we can increase the conversion of it. Now, if we were to categorize data into three different subsets, we would talk about getting users, then driving usage so that people are actually using it, coming back to it, and then conversion, right? Making money. And as a rule of thumb, what we wanna do is measure few metrics but measure them well. Now for this stage, you're really gonna be focusing on metrics like how many people landed on the page, how do people interact with that page, what proportion of the people who landed on this page actually clicked on the button. From the people who clicked on the button, how many of those people actually filled out their email address or actually booked that call after clicking on that first call to action. These are all metrics that are gonna tell us 
how well or not we're doing, but they're really not going to replace us trying to get conversations in with those individuals. So anyone who's actually giving you their email, you're also gonna to wanna to contact in parallel and have those deeper qualitative conversations with to understand where you might have gone wrong or where you went right, right? Potentially even trying to understand what they were most interested in in this tool. That's gonna to point us later on into the features we're gonna to wanna to be building for our MVP build. Now there are a couple of really big mistakes that people make at this stage. Now the first one is all around vanity metrics, right? There are metrics within your startup in general that are really not gonna be very useful for you. They make you feel great, like the number of Instagram followers you have, potentially, or the number of YouTube subscribers you have, but they might not actually be a good calculation of whether or not you're doing a good job running this startup. And so try to make sure that you're not falling into the mistake that everyone calls success theater, which is essentially where we're playing the game of feeling like we feel great about what we built when really there is not much advancing. Now the second mistake that people make, now this is usually a little bit further on, is that they either choose short-term or long-term strategies when it comes to data and the decisions that they're making, right? Uh, we really want to have a good balance between short-term and long-term. So a long-term strategy might be just overall branding, right? Brand equity. You can't really measure the results of brand equity, but it's a long-term strategy that will really be useful for you in later stages of your company. And if you only focus on short-term strategies, you might be burning out your email list because you're trying to get as many sales as possible from those individuals. And if you don't have many more people coming into your funnel, that's a big problem. And the third biggest mistake is actually probably the largest one, which is to have a lot of data and never take action. So really analysis paralysis, we're gathering all this stuff, but we're not using it to make any smart decisions. Remember, data is all about making decisions. It is one of the aspects that we are going to use you also want to use logic and your gut. So those were some of the basics around tracking and analytics for early stage entrepreneurs. If you're enjoying this video, like, subscribe. Again, check out these videos with loads more content. We talk about no code, we talk about early stage entrepreneurship and loads of other things. This was week four of an eight week program. So keep following and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.